about the F word. This, this was a big hit down. Uh, this was a big hit down at the lumberyard in Portland. Fuck you, Dad. Fuck you, Dad. Fuck you, Dad. My son is yelling at me. We're anchored in the creek, preparing to go out in the bay to set nets. He's trying to start the motor. He's twisting the throttle, juking it back and forth. I don't like this. I'm instructing him. He doesn't respond. I project my drill sergeant harsh voice. You know, the voice that triggers old emotions. The ones carried with us in the duffel bag of our family dynamic. <laughs> Those ones. He twists the throttle down and gives me the aforementioned response. Well, yeah, we'll be working a little wet and a little tired. We're, gonna lose, we're not going to sleep tonight. I think a lot of fish are coming. I'm going to be an effective leader and change the emotional tenor. Then he says, everything I ever learned, I, I didn't learn it from you. I learned it on my own. <laughs> but now I feel angry. I stop and start counting and taking deep breaths. I think, I ask myself, is this true? Probably. I tell him to take us out of the creek and shut my mouth. Even a fish won't get caught if it doesn't open its mouth. We got to the bay and fish. In the cabin, I write, fuck you on the wall, the magic marker. Below, I write their initials. When I receive the FU utterance, I put a hash mark next to the offender's initials. <laughs> the lamp puts after about 10, the lasting after 3. <laughs> the great Delaney is living in an abandoned bunkhouse in the ghost cannery. It's a long wooden building that has been divided to accommodate Marky's sitting net crew on the other end. Mark is from rural Alaska. Underneath the calm voice, the slow speech, corny joke presentation, is a pretty sharp mind. Underneath his alcohol, Jones, is a pretty hard worker. His son, the brilliant lad, has graduated college with a petroleum engineer degree, but his mind is erratic. He cannot focus and has difficulty with personal relations. His physical and mental aspect is jerky and alarming. Sometimes he tells me about conspiracies involving numbers, social relations, and the FBI. Delaney hears them arguing through the wall. She hears scuffling. She says they're slapping each other around. Our friend Terry hears them out on the beach. The son is screaming, fuck you, Dad, fuck you, Dad, you're a motherfucker. <laughs> a moment later, he goes, he hears, he hears Mark's low, slow response. Son, I am not a motherfucker. I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Thompson, a man with nothing but a past, when he came to Knack Knack early in the 70s, told me he was a truck driver up from the Dakotas. When I first saw him in the ghost town canner, he was picking corn out of the... <laughs> picking corn out of other people's excrement, basically. He was wandering around the tundra, stopping now and then to explore the subsurface with a rusty steel probe. He said he was searching for parka squirrel burrows. He could find rice and beans. He bummed a smoke and tried to seduce me with grand ideas for making lots of money in Bristol Bay. Thompson soon proposed marriage to one of the daughters of the winter watchman of an old cannery in town. We're taking a steam bath together, he tells me, just as pleased as punch. He gives me the elbow and the leer. His father-in-law was, in turn, a man from the lower 48 who had arrived in the area and married a local woman. These marriages are, in a sense, sort of tribal affairs. Being a member of a local family gives an outsider support and knowledge that he needs just to live in this kind of an environment. Yeah. It, it, it gives him the connections he, made, he needs to function in a rural economy, basically. One gains acceptance into a group which still hunts and gathers for subsistence. One becomes a family member that is supported in a village. Thompson and Betts were married for a number of years and had children before the trouble began. I think there was drinking and spousal abuse involved. I don't know the details because I'm not a member of the family. <laughs> Knowing Thompson, money and careless business deals probably had a hand in the dissolution of their marriage. Some years later, I ran into Thompson at the governor's picnic in Anchorage. It's a free feed. We're caught up with each other. Still has big ideas, still needs partners, whoever one needs something, whoever something he needs. He had moved to another village and I married again. That marriage was no longer an issue in his life. He had a second family living there that he had not seen uh, for some time. In fact, he tells me he had been up in that village recently on business and a funny thing happened. He went into the store went into the, to the uh, God, trading post store. And when he came out, two 10-year-old boys were breaking the windows of the old car he had borrowed. Oh, boys, 
Oh boys, what the hell are you doing, Thompson saying? One of the little boys turns around and looks at him and says, Fuck you, Daddy. <laughs> He's his son. He didn't recognize his own son. <laughs>